Hispanic Heritage Month is coming. Let's talk about tips, activities, and lesson plans you can use for the range of levels that you teach in order to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month in your Spanish classroom. Hi, I'm Ashley, aka Senior to Spanish, where we provide easy to use resources to save you time and energy while you're lesson planning. If you're new here, I just wanna make sure that you know that links to everything that I mentioned will be in the description box below this video. Okay, so let's talk about tips and things to remember about Hispanic Heritage Month before we get into the activities and lesson plan ideas. The first tip I have for you I think is probably pretty obvious and I think you don't even have to think about it really in the language that we teach, but I just wanna make sure that we know celebrating Hispanic heritage is more than just one month of the year and like I said, I think you probably already are doing this year round in your classroom, but it's important to celebrate the month and the rest of the year as well. The second tip that I have for you is to vary what you do from level to level. And we're gonna talk about this a little bit more. So if you're a department of one, this isn't gonna be all that complicated. You just have to do a little bit of reflection and I'm gonna share an activity to help you with that in a moment. But if you are part of a larger district or there's multiple teachers who teach your language or you know maybe there's elementary school, middle school, and high school, so you not only have to coordinate with other high schools in your district, but also what the middle school teachers are doing and the elementary school teachers are doing. That could be kind of a process. This is something that I would even recommend bringing up at a professional development day. Maybe if you have PLC time at some point in time, I think this is really important to have as a conversation in your department to make sure that you know what elementary is teaching is not the exact same thing as what middle school is teaching, is not the exact same thing as what high school is teaching because you don't want your students to get to Spanish 3 and be like, oh, we're learning about Frida again. You don't want them to feel like we've been doing the exact same thing forever and there's so much more you can talk about, right? Usually it feels like we're running out of time when it comes to the countries and the cultures and the perspectives and so much that we have to share with our students. So making sure that we're really taking advantage of all of the different levels and all of the different opportunities we have to talk with them is super important. So make sure that you're coordinating with your district, your department, and then just looking at your own levels as well. So along those same lines, I want you to really consider who you're highlighting in your celebrations and who is missing from the celebration. And that kind of comes in hand in hand with the what are other teachers in your department and district doing. So I wanted to share with you just a really quick reflection activity that can kind of help find those spots. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna either take out a list of Spanish speaking countries or maybe you're just gonna pull one up on your screen. And what I want you to do is either pull out your curriculum and pacing guide or just, you know, run through it in your head. If you've been teaching for a while, you probably have your curriculum, like you know it like the back of your hand. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go through the year with one of the levels that you teach. And every time you have a lesson or a resource that mentions or highlights a particular country, I want you to highlight it on your list. Then, as you proceed through the year, as you progress through your curriculum, if you mention a country more than once, put a little tally mark next to it. So it should be highlighted for the first time that you talk about it, and then get it gets a tally if it's repeated. Go all the way through your year, all the way through your curriculum. Then repeat this for each level that you teach. So you should have a list of countries for your ones, for your twos, you know, so on. Like I mentioned before, if you teach as part of a large department, I highly recommend doing this as part of a PLC day or department day because Right, even if you teach the same levels, what happens in classroom to classroom might not be the same. So making sure that you're comparing across the district, even within your school, is going to be really valuable. So then I want you to look at your list, right? You ideally have several, if not all countries highlighted, but hopefully what you're not seeing is that you have, you know, maybe three or four countries highlighted with like five or six tally marks next to it while there's a whole bunch of countries that don't have any marks at all, right? What we're doing is we're looking at what are students seeing? What are we presenting over and over and over to them? And what are they not seeing? Are there any countries that aren't mentioned at all? And then another layer to this, another thing that I think is really important to think about is what are they seeing in level one? What are they seeing in two, three, four, AP if you have it, Spanish five or six if you have it, right? Obviously that will depend on your school, but often, in most programs, ones and twos are the biggest levels, and then threes, fours, and higher get you know smaller as they go. So whatever you're presenting in one is going to reach the most students. Now there's a lot that can be said about this activity, and there's a lot that can be said about this reflection, but something that I just want you to consider is just, 
who is missing? Who is maybe getting, I don't want to say favorited, because right, we all have things that have we have stronger personal connections to. So maybe you're more likely to talk about them. But you're just thinking about how can I make sure I'm balancing these perspectives and really showing my students what there is in the target culture because there's so many things we can discuss and explore with them. So just making sure you're considering that. The other thing that I really wanted to talk to you about is just because something is done in elementary school doesn't mean it can't be done again in middle or high school, but you just want to consider, right? So if you are discussing this as a department and you say, oh, I didn't know that elementary does a two week project on the monarchs. I talk about it for a month in my Spanish twos. Okay, well maybe it might be a good idea to move that project to Spanish three or four so the Spanish two classes that are probably slightly bigger could talk about a different topic and then your Spanish threes and fours could go even more in depth. Maybe they're gonna combine it with a science unit or something like that, right? So if you're thinking about a lot of different things that you could do, it's okay to have things more than once but then you wanna make sure that you're going deeper when they're hearing about it again. Hopefully that reflection activity was helpful for you. Hopefully it gave you some things to consider, right? Maybe it even helped you identify some holes. And so then you're going to be thinking about different activities, lesson plans, or resources you can use to incorporate in your Hispanic Heritage Month celebration. And we'll get to those in just a second. So the next tip that I have is to bring in experts. If you can bring in people who speak the target language from your own community, that is gonna be so powerful for your students. However, I know that can also be really tricky to coordinate, right? Maybe somebody is able to give up one hour of their day, but they can't come speak to all six sections of your Spanish one students. So that does require a little bit of coordination, right? Then some options might be have them come into one hour and record it, and then you know the other classes just watch the recording instead, or maybe you can line up a couple of different guests. Maybe you have one person for one hour, a different person for another hour, and then your students could share about what they learned and do like a little bit of a swapsies all the way around to share the information. But bringing in the experts. If you don't have anybody in your community or the schedule doesn't work out or your school security doesn't let people in, all of those kinds of things, go to the internet. We are so lucky to have the internet be such a useful resource for us. There's no reason why we can't bring in other voices that way. So when we're talking about bringing in voices from the internet, I wanted to share with you just three resources for you to help you with that. The first is a blog post from my friend Josefina Ferreiro. She has a blog post detailing how to bring in experts and resources for you to connect with them virtually. So I'll make sure to link that in the description of this video for you so you can go check out her information. Another option would be to bring in a novel to do with your students, right? You may not think about a novel as bringing in an expert, but it kind of is, right? <laughs> They've shared their perspectives, their experiences, but they just put it down in words. So that would be a good option to do. Maybe you want to choose a novel to do with your students throughout Hispanic Heritage Month. This is the Author Spotlight series I have on my blog where I've chosen authors, I've invited them in, they come in and they do an interview with me so that way you could read about why they've chosen to write, why they talk about the stories that they do. That would be a great option to share with your students. The third option I have for you is the Accento Latino website. And I've mentioned that before in other videos, but in case you missed that or you haven't seen it before, Accento Latino is a catalog of authors who have organized and categorized their books by levels and by different topics, so that way you can easily see which ones are the best fit for your own levels. I will make sure to link to their website in the description box below. And if you wanted to take a closer look at any of their books, I have quite a few of their books highlighted in my book playlist, where what I do is I pull a book off my shelf and then I flip through it for you right in front of you and I kind of talk about what kind of language is used in it, what kind of supports are there for your students, what is the topic, are there things that you need to be aware of, all of that kind of stuff. I know sometimes it can be kind of hard to judge from a website whether or not a book is a good fit for you, so I've been working on that playlist and that would be a great resource for you and I'll make sure to link that here for you as well. Okay, now that we've gotten through all of the different tips that I have for you, things for you to keep in mind and consider as you're planning your Hispanic Heritage Month celebrations, let's talk about what can you actually do with your classes. And like I said, there's gonna be a variety. So one of my favorite options to do with students is a research project. And I've talked about research projects before on my channel, but one of my favorite things about them is that it allows students to go and explore and discover and learn on their own. 
And then you can kind of do a jigsaw type activity where, you know, one student is the expert about whatever they researched on or whomever they researched, and then they can share that information back to their classmates, back to their peers. So some research project options that I think are great for Hispanic Heritage Month include a biography research poster, right, where they learn about a person and then they share that information. Obviously, a country research project is super fun for Hispanic Heritage Month, especially with your novices when they're just, <laughs> you know, maybe this is just my students, maybe it's yours, I don't know, but some students seem to not even know all of the different countries that exist out in the world. So to do a country research project is a great option for them to start even opening their eyes to what exists. I love to do virtual field trips with my classes, and we have talked about that many, many times on my channel, but I don't think we've really talked about virtual field trip projects before, and that's something that we could certainly talk about more, but doing a virtual field trip project where students create the virtual field trip, and then, you know, swap around with their classmates, and they can go on each other's virtual field trips. Super fun, <laughs> like, incredibly engaging. They love it. The next option I have for you is to do a gallery walk. And I've mentioned gallery walks before. I love them so much because it gets students up and moving around and gives them a ton, ton, ton of input. And this gallery walk in particular that I'm thinking of gives students a lot of really basic information. It's super comprehensible for your novice students, but it's introducing them to famous Hispanics. So they're gonna walk around, they're gonna read about them, and they're gonna make sure that they understand by doing the various comprehension activities, right? You can pick and choose whatever fits best for your students' needs, but that is one of like the pillars of my Hispanic Heritage Month activities that I like to do. And actually, once they've done the gallery walk, we might use that over and over again for like a bell ringer or for warm-ups, or maybe they're gonna use it as a mentor text later before they do a biography research project. There's a lot of ways that you can kind of lean into that and stretch that out, but the gallery walk is always the first thing that I do with that set of readings. The next lesson plan idea that I have for you is actually a virtual field trip. Not a virtual field trip project like I mentioned earlier, but to actually just take a virtual field trip. And I have a whole video where I share a lesson plan on how to do this in your classes for Hispanic Heritage Month, so I won't go into it too much in detail for you here, but I will put that video here for you to go check out if you're interested. And then actually I have a different virtual field trip that I don't mention in that video that I really like to use with novices because it focuses on the structure SARE Day, which is perfect for novices and ties in really well to Hispanic Heritage Month because it shares about a bunch of different people and talks about where they're from and what they're well known for. So it really, really, really practices cognates, right? We're thinking about es una autora famosa, es un jugador de baseball famoso, right? Obviously there's pictures and videos to support their understanding as well, but it really, really reinforces that where they're from and what they're well known for and helps students say, hey, I can read like short paragraphs of text in Spanish already at this point in the year, they feel really awesome after doing it. And I love that it helps them connect with where, because sometimes, right, you're talking about Shakira and you're saying she's from Colombia and they're like, I don't know where that is, you know, or they didn't even know that Colombia was a country, you know, like things like that happen. So I love that virtual field trips help them see on the map where, what are we talking about? Where does this exist in the world? So they can start to kind of form those connections and see outside of their own city that they live in, that they've grown up in. Maybe they've lived in their entire lives, some of them. So maybe your curriculum is super packed and you're like, I love these ideas, but there's no way I can use, you know, a week to do a research project. So here's another option for you. I already mentioned that the gallery walk I like to use as a warm up all month long. That's a great option. Virtual field trip is a great option for just a one day lesson. But I also love this bulletin board. And what it is, is it's actually a bulletin board with trivia questions on it. So you could just hang it up in your class and as students are coming in or out or passing periods or fast finishers, all of that sort of thing, and they can just kind of go look. They can just kind of go check it out. You can, of course, do the trivia game with your students and that could be a one day thing where you're just playing and having fun or i also have sets where i've broken it up into different like themes so maybe trivia about the capitals or trivia actually about hispanic heritage month itself and where it came from why it started that sort of stuff so you could break it up and do you know one trivia game a week throughout the entire hispanic heritage month that's maybe a little bit shorter or you could do one game day and just play 
I've also mentioned in my Hispanic Heritage Month school-wide celebration activities that you could do this over the announcements and play kind of in between classes as like a competition throughout your school, which would be super fun too. Thanks so much for watching. If you need any additional help doing your lesson plans or coming up with ideas for ways that you can celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, make sure you check out the description box down below this video where I've linked everything that I've mentioned, all those resources, Acento Latino, some websites for you to go check out, different things that can help you as your lesson planning for your students, for your school, or for your Spanish club all month long. All right, I'll see you in the next one.